good evening. I think everybody, including me, it sounded half-hearted. Everybody sounded half-hearted, including me. Let's try it again. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, that's much better. We should be excited. We're in the Lord's house. Let's, uh, let's open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just, dear Lord, we just thank you for blessing us. We thank you for uh, bringing us all together tonight. What a privilege. What a privilege it is to be able to study your word, Father, freely in this land that we live in. Uh, and Father, what, what a privilege it is to even just have copies or a copy of your word that we can truly study. And, and tonight I pray that you would be with us as we, as we go through, uh, continue our journey through uh, the book of Romans. Father, I pray that you would uh, open our hearts and our minds, allow us to hear clearly from you, to be able to uh, understand the words that are presented to us and, and to be able to arm ourselves with these words and have a, a deep understanding uh, of what was written and why. Uh, and Father, I just pray that in the midst of this, that you'd also give us a great time of fellowship together and a great time of worship together. Father, we just love you, love you so much, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would y'all please stand? Uh, new prayer listing out for you. We've got a couple of extra uh, items I'd like to add and a couple of updates uh, on folks. Uh, I do want to say thank you to Buddy Corley. He's not here this evening, but uh, literally filling in the last minute last week. Um, I, I think I called him about 4 or 4.15 and, and uh, we are blessed here uh, with folks that will fill in 
uh, and, and are great teachers uh, and godly people, and I just, uh, I, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for Buddy uh, helping us out last week. Um, do want to mention a couple of uh, updates. Miss Marianne West, uh, uh, my understanding is uh, they met with hospice this week. She is, uh, last time I talked to uh, uh, Mayhew, they were going to start, I believe, Tuesday or Wednesday, but we need to be in prayer for Miss Marianne and, and also for May, Mayhew. Uh, Miss Virginia Chapman, I went and saw her today. Um, she, uh, she fell, but she did not break anything but they're trying to figure out what's causing these falls. And so they're just running a litany of tests. I, I, and I've joked about her with this for a while. I joked about it with her today in the hospital that I'm fixing to go get some bubble wrap and bubble wrap her. And uh, she said that'd probably be the best thing at this point. But anyway, they're running tests. Keep her in your prayers. Saw Bob Horn today. Uh, he's doing well. He's, in a, he's out of the ICU. And... Uh, he was upset, some of y'all probably know this, he was upset the other day with the doctor because the doctor gave him some bad news that he could no longer have regular Mountain Dew. And uh, I told him he could join my club, Diet Mountain Dew. So I took him some Diet Mountain Dew today and he was, uh, his spirits were lifted, I believe. But uh, they, they're saying maybe, maybe Thursday evening, Friday, Saturday, somewhere like that, he may be back home where he belongs. Uh, a couple of other updates. This is not on your prayer list. A uh, friend of Kelly and I, uh, Miss Jeannie Young, uh, she has is experiencing downstream effects from COVID that's affected her heart. Uh, so please keep her in your prayer. Uh, I, I would, I, I think, yes, we have the country of Ukraine, but I would add after reading headlines today and, and hearing some news, I don't watch the news. But I watched the news this evening before I came up here. And the rhetoric and the, the noise that's coming out of Russia right now is scary. If, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, it can be very scary. That man is out of control. And they've mobilized a partial mobilization. And we heard this evening that every flight out of the country is sold out right now. Uh, people are just, they're, they're leaving. That's crazy. Drafting 65-year-old men. <laughs> uh, Shepherd's Hands, uh, we got an update from them this week. We're going to be doing the coat ministry this year that we always do, and we're waiting on a final count. That's probably going to be end of uh, October before we, we have the listing like we always uh, desire to have. But they do have a, a need right now, and you may have seen the boxes. It's going to be in the bulletin. Jeans and shoes of all sizes, um, very, very gently used. They don't want, you know, used-looking things, but uh, they have a, a strong need for shoes and jeans of all sizes. Um, I know. I, I'm, just give me Wranglers and Levi's. No rips, no tears. Uh, but anyway, uh, they, we're going to collect those over the next several weeks and try to get those up to them uh, as quick as we can. Any others? Any other prayer requests? Yes, sir, Wayne. Wayne. How'd that go? That's, that's a praise right there. For those online, Wayne got his first round of shots yesterday, and it's not... Do you mind if I say what you told me yesterday? It's a disc issue, not arthritis. So he's going through shots to try to help out with that. So keep Wayne in your prayers. I had dinner with them last night. I had we stumbled. I stumbled onto them at a place, and so it was my pleasure to be able to sit with them. But yes, we got Alan Becky back, and Becky got. I cannot say what I'm thinking because I'm on that thing right there. So I'm just going to say yes. I'm glad to have Alan Becky back is all I'm going to say. Uh, 
Ryan Black. Ryan Black, for those that can't hear, four-wheeler accident. One of the lungs still not fully inflated. Broken ribs, broken collarbone, but maybe coming home Monday. Okay, and that's Ryan Black. Good to have y'all back. Back where you belong. Yeah. Oh, I thought you had one. Yes, ma'am. Oh, nice. nice. <laughs> if I remember right, and, and for those who can't hear, Good News Club, Last week they had 50 some odd children, is that right? Still good numbers this week? Yeah. I guess it was last week still. Good. Yeah. That's what we're seeing with this. Yeah. Others, I see another hand somewhere. She's home. So pray then, continue prayers. Father, I want to thank you so much for all the blessings you've given us. Thanks for the praises that we've heard tonight. And we know it's you and nobody else making all those, all those things happen. Please be with the others who've been mentioned, especially Ryan Black and, and others that need your help right now and help and guide the, the doctors. And we just know that all that you do is going to be what we need. Thank you for all the blessings again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. What what is the fundraiser again? Uh, ten dollars chicken plate, I think. Okay. When is that? Those that online fundraiser for Josh Brown, tickets at the cell barn. Okay, Demi has tickets, and it's for a. October 8th, 4 to 6. Is it at the cell barn? Is that, is that where the pick? Okay. Pick up. And how much is it? $10. $10 or as much as you want to give. That's right. 10 and up. All right. Well, we're going <clears> to <throat> try to jump back in. Uh, hopefully you had the notes from last week. I left them back out this week. It's the same set of notes because um, obviously we didn't, we didn't use those from last week. But we... Uh, we started in chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then I missed last week. So we'll pick back up Romans 10, about midway point, and then we might find our way into chapter 11, but I, I've got a little something at the end tonight that's off script that, that I want to talk through as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how far we get, but if you think about chapter 10 and where we 
where we got to and what what was what was discussed. Uh, Paul had continued his discussion in Apostle Paul on Israel's refusal to submit uh, to the righteousness of God. They had a zeal for God, noted that they had a zeal for God, but not the right knowledge. Uh, and then there, we had a con we discussed a contrast of of um, between God's righteousness and what the Israelites uh, attempted at. They were attempting through the law uh, to obtain righteousness, but God clearly says through faith. And, and we, we hear that in Romans 10, uh, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will, you will be saved. Uh, and so we see clearly that God provided the way through his son Jesus but we have an obligation to respond uh, and, and to believe in him, to believe not just in his existence, but what he did uh, for our salvation. Uh, that really kind of sets up the latter half of uh, chapter 10. We're going to pick up in verse 14 where we're going to be tonight. Uh, and, and this is an interesting uh, series of verses as we get to the end of chapter 10 uh, because Paul makes a case uh, of their unbelief uh, he's, he's, and he can see it more clearly as we go through it how he's making a case that it is their doing their responsibility They're, they are at fault uh, air quotes for not believing but, but first he starts with this verse, uh, verses 14 and 15. How shall they, let me read that line, but I think that may be NIV, uh, 14 and 15. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without preaching? And how shall they preach unless they are sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Uh, Paul's talking at this point uh, about uh, the way the gospel is spread. It's, it's notable. Uh, he goes back to talking about the preaching of the word. It's interesting if you think about this. God could have chosen any way to disseminate the gospel. Any way. He could have done it through angels. He could have done it through clouds. He could have done it through birds. But he said, preacher is going to preach the word. We're going to, I'm going to give you my word. Preachers are going to preach the word. And, and, and Paul is calling this out. He says, how beautiful are the feet. And, and this, I don't know if that's a metaphor or an analogy. It's a, some kind of word like that's bouncing through my, my head. But really, it's, it's, he's describing the effort, the action of, of preachers on the move, actionable, uh, sharing the gospel. How beautiful are the feet? How beautiful is this, this activity that... Uh, preachers are preaching God's word is, is really where he's going with this. Who bring glad tidings of good things. Um, this, this phrase in here, as it is written uh, in this verse, uh, verse 15, and how shall they preach unless they, they are sent? As it is written. As it is written. That's, that's a look back, if you will, to uh, the prophet Isaiah. Uh, the prophet Isaiah was talking about the sharing the gospel, sharing the good news, sharing uh, not of works, but of faith. Uh, that, that is the glad tidings, the good news and glad tidings, if you will. And so it's just a look back to what the prophet Isaiah said. It's interesting now, we have this, we have this notable shift, is what I'm going to call it, um, that uh, the Apostle Paul is reminding us of the prophet's commentary, the prophets uh, foretelling of Israel's rejection. And he quotes several scriptures here, although it doesn't call it out uh, where they're located. I'm going to give you these as we look at it. But he, he's going to provide a case here based upon the testimony of other prophets, other scriptures. And so if we look at this, verses 16 and 17, it says, for they have not all obeyed all, they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah, so that tells us in Isaiah, Isaiah 53, verse 1, Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. 
I'm going to pause there for a second. If you think about this, the, you know, the salvation, and this is, this is kind of, I, I hadn't thought about this till just now, but salvation by faith, the salvation is so simple. Something I've talked about for many years, the simplicity of the gospel. Man really tries to mess it up by adding all these other requirements. Has anybody watched the, uh, the, uh, the queen's funeral? Uh, I, I, I enjoy watching things like that, just to see the differences. But the, the formality and the certain things that priests had to do or did do, um, that's all man-made. A lot of that is man-made. But what, what he says here is, Lord, who has, our, who has believed our report? He's calling it out that they did not believe what Isaiah said so many years prior. Uh, this is Isaiah testifying through his word several hundred years prior. And he says, so faith comes by hearing, and, and hearing by the word of God. Yet Israel heard, but they did not obey. They heard, so they, they, they did not obey, so they, they, it's their fault, if you want to uh, say it that way. They were responsible because they heard the declarations made by the prophets of old. Verse 18. Verse 18 says, But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. That's a quote from Psalms, or Psalm 19, verse 4. Um, the, the, the sound, the word, the gospel at this point had gone out to the world. Now, we can't assume that it had gone out to the entire world but certainly in and around the promised land and the Roman Empire, the word had gone out. Uh, they, they had the knowledge. Again, remember they had zeal, but they didn't have the right knowledge. This is pointing to that fact that the word had indeed spread through the land, but they had not believed. They had not believed what was said, even though they had opportunity. And you can point to our world that we live in today the, the word of God has gone out in so many languages throughout the United States in many different places. I know perhaps there's children that may not have heard, but there are plenty of people that have heard the word, yet they refuse to listen to the word. I'm going to get too preachy. I'm going to move on to verse 19. It says, But I say, did Israel not know? First, Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move you to an anger by a foolish nation. Uh, anger by a foolish nation. He is telling in this. God told Israel that He would bring others close to Him, others other than Israel, which points to the Gentiles. Israel ignored the word, making them even more accountable. Again, think about Paul making a case here. He is making a case, presenting it that it was. The, Israels, the Israelites who were responsible for their lack of believing. By the way, that, that was a quote from, or the reference to Deuteronomy 32, 21. So then we get to verses 20 and 21. I'm going to go ahead and give you references here. It goes back to Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah 65, verse 1, and Isaiah 65, verse 2. He says, and I'm going to go ahead and read both of these, but Isaiah is very bold. And says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. But to Israel, he says, all day long I've stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Isaiah is very bold in this prediction. Uh, it was a warning that Israel would not listen. Israel will, would ignore what had been say, said, making them more accountable for their lack of belief. And he says, I was found by those who, who weren't really seeking me. That's the, the Gentiles that he's talking about. And this is God's voice. You can hear it when he says, uh, all day long I've stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Uh, this is God's assessment, if you will, of a disobedient Messiah rejecting Israel. 
They're just disobedient people. And so if you think about where we get, we're, we're at the end of chapter 10 here. And from this, if you start coupling it together, remember we, we were going down this path and we got to chapter 9 and we said we're going to take a, a, a three-chapter sidestep, uh, if you will. Chapter 9 concluded uh, with Paul's declaration that Israel had stumbled uh, over the stumbling stone of Christ. That was the last thing that was said, uh, or one of the last things that was said in chapter uh, 9 as we were closing that out. Now 10, uh, we, we see where Paul has a heartfelt prayer that Israel would be saved despite uh, her commitment to trying to save herself through works. Um, and the question that we could come up with right now as we think about these two chapters coupled together uh, is that uh, why have the Israelites not confessed uh, the lordship of Jesus and believed in the resurrection? It's obviously by Scripture, not because they haven't heard or understood. They had plenty of opportunity for both, but clearly they just disobeyed. And so that sets us up for perhaps uh, another question. They rejected Jesus, are they lost forever? And that's what chapter 11 tells us. It walks us through that, that God is still waiting uh, for Israel. God is still holding out his hand uh, to her, waiting uh, for her. So let's, let's jump into uh, chapter 11 and see where we can't get with this. Verse 1, um, we, we see this question. I say then, has God cast away his people? And he gives us the answer, certainly not. Certainly not. Uh, the, you know, we, we go back, if you're reading chapter 11, stand alone, you go back and look at what was said in chapter 9 and chapter 10, and, and you would wonder, is, is Israel's fate settled? Is there no possibility of restoration? And, and now we're going to walk through and, and understand from Paul's perspective that no, they, there is possibility. They, they need to change their direction. Uh, they are not permanently cast away, and we hear this clearly by the Scripture. He goes on and says, For I'm an Israelite, the seed of Abraham, the tribe of Benjamin. Uh, what a great way for Paul to continue down the path of making his case about Israel not being rejected. He said, I'm an Israelite, right? I, I'm one of them. Which, by the way, I'm going to get an amen from Brother Ray, I know, here in a few minutes. He doesn't know he's going to amen, but he's going to amen me here in a second. He, he's starting off right here with a testimony. We need to hear more testimonies, Brother Ray. Amen. See, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. He starts off by answering this question and tells, I was an Israelite. I was of the tribe of Benjamin. And I could just hear him, not recorded here, going on and telling the story of how he came to know Jesus. And, and the, the question, this isn't my sidebar that I'm going to have later, but it is a, another little sidebar, that are you ready to give your testimony? I love silence, by the way. Kelly knows I love silence when we've negotiated certain things I just I like to go silent when I ask awkward questions right because everybody in this room should have your testimony ready and most of us think that we do right but if I said Becky or Al tell me about your, your life with Jesus why you know, it, it's, it's a story that we have to be prepared for. And I would tell you from a seminary standpoint, you, know, you want me to take the mic over to him now? Uh, you have, it, it, there's a flow of how you can tell the story. And my hope and my prayer is that everyone at Saluda Baptist Church is prepared to share your testimony to, to others because that can be more powerful than say, hey, just join me in uh, Sunday school. Join me in church. 
join me at this time. What is more powerful is to see how God changed me in my life, and he could do the same thing for you. That's a powerful story, and, and the Bible tells us that we have to be prepared for that, to preach the word in, in season and out of season, to be prepared at all times. First Peter uh, chapter 2, uh, ver verse 9, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him. I love that. That should get us so fired up that we go marching on Main Street right now to share the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. So my challenge is, again, that's a rabbit trail, but if you're not prepared, or if you want to try to better prepare your testimony, come and see me. I can help you walk through the, way, the layout of how that, because it all starts with who was I before? And then what happened? What happened? And how am I changed now? That's the flow of a testimony. And by the way, effective ones last about five to ten minutes at the most, because usually after ten minutes, you're going to lose everybody's attention. You know, yeah. Now, if you have a cup of coffee and an apple fritter to dunk, you might get 20 to 30 minutes. Well, let's move on. My mouth's going to start watering. That used to be my advice. Starbucks and either apple fritter or their donut, one of the two. <clears throat> All right, let's look at 11 uh, verses 2 through 5. It says, God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew? Or do you not know that the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so then, at this present time, there's a remnant according to election of grace. We get into this discussion of a remnant. Um, God has not cast away his people at all. Uh, Paul, in Paul's day, I would say probably the majority of the Israelites had rejected the Messiah. They had rejected Jesus, but there was a remnant. Uh, and Paul, uh, Paul here points back to a time with Elijah when things were so bad that Elijah called out and prayed to God about his own people. And, and it was a time when he thought he was the only one surviving and they were coming after him. And he said at that time that there was a remnant of 7,000 people. Uh, what, what God is disclosing through through. Uh, the Apostle Paul here is there, there's always the remnant. There's always the remnant. If you look at Israel, there's always a remnant. And by the way, somewhere down the road in the United States, I believe there's going to be a time of just a remnant here of believers. There, we've always dealt with a remnant uh, uh, in, in, from God's perspective. And, and what the beauty of a remnant, my humble opinion here, it's the world that we live in, we think that there has to be thousands and thousands of voices or big, no, big notable voices or, or whatever, but it really starts, a remnant can just start with one person. One person leads to another, two lead to four, four lead to eight. Next thing you know, you have a, a crowd. He goes on in uh, verses 6 through 10 to basically tell us God's right to choose a remnant and that it's by grace, uh, not of works here. I want to read this for us, verses 6 to 10. And if by grace, then it is no longer of works, otherwise grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace, otherwise work is no longer work. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Just as it was written, God has given them a spirit of stupor, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear to this very day. And David says, let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a recompense for them. 
Let their eyes be darkened so that they do not see and bow, bow down their, their back always. Paul left that previous section talking about the remnant, and the, the remnant was uh, at the election of grace, if you will, and he reminds us about grace. It's a gift from God. I preached on that a couple weeks ago, the amazing grace that God has given us uh, through his son Jesus. Um, here we see, as Paul's talking about grace, it is of God's will to give and show grace to whom he chooses. And it's not, grace is not works, and works is not grace. They don't work together, is what he's saying here. The elect had obtained it, he says, and the rest were hardened. Um, just as it is written, this is a reference to Isaiah 29 and Psalm 69 that tells us that God can give a spirit of stupor and eyes that should not see and let their eyes be darkened. Uh, if, he's, if God is uh, uh, pleased to enlighten just certain eyes, that is God's will, God's choice, God's ability. God is God and we are not is what the Apostle Paul is telling us here. Verse 11. I'm going to pause here. I'm going to pick back up at 11 next week. Because I want to go down a different path for just a second. Not in my notes. But it's just something God's placed on my heart. I got a text last night from, I'm going to go uh, anonymous for y'all, because the person doesn't matter, young person. I got a text last night from somebody, unfortunately after I went to bed, so that wasn't really that late, but it was late for me. Um, and so I saw it this morning, first thing, and I wanted to answer, but I had to wait until they got up because I, I get up too early. But I, I want to ask a question and then tell the story. The question, and I, and I don't want any answers. I don't want any audible answers. Respectfully, I say that. Why are you here tonight? Why are you here on Sunday morning for Sunday school, if you come to Sunday school, why are you here for church as we come to worship? And, and I will even say as we come to worship, we do come to worship, but I think there's a portion that is for us to edify. What is it, what is it that you seek when you come to Bible study in particular? And, and the reason I, I ask this I, I was presented a question by a young person who had been hanging out with other young people, studying, uh, studying God's Word. I'm trying to be very generic when I say this. Similar, but different faiths. And they got into a discussion on predestination and there was disagreement and one of them said my, my dad's a pastor and this is the way it is this is what I understand and um, what I love about this situation is that our young person reached out to me right, and said I just, I don't understand. Can you just help me in language that I understand? And so we had this great dialogue back and forth this morning talking about predestination. That, that is a deep, deep topic. And what I told this person is, by the way, a lot of people don't understand this and many pastors don't. I mean, that may be, considered by some as being boastful or arrogant, it's not. <laughs> I can go into a group of room with many pastors and there'll be disagreement and, and uh, 
I'm going to say, I know the truth. I've studied it over and over and over again, what predestination is. Because the ultimate question that was presented to this young person was, why does it matter that you would even go out and share the gospel if everything's already predetermined? We don't need to do that, is what was said. And that hit me like a ton of bricks, right? And so I, I, I shared predestination in about five different texts. Now, they were long texts. Um, and she said, oh, wow, that makes, that makes sense. So my question, I want to go back to my questions for just a second. Why are you here? I think it's good for us all to edify ourselves. It's good for us to understand the scriptures. It's good for us to spend time learning God's word. But are you coming just to benefit yourself or are you coming, arming yourself, prepared to go out and share that, to rebuke and to correct and share the truth in this world? Because this world, they are twisting God's word apart. They're trying to. God's church will never fail. God's church will never die. We know that for a, a fact but they're twisting it apart. And we have to be ready. And, and this is more of a, just a challenge or a gut check for us tonight. Are we coming to just come? Or are we coming to prepare ourselves for battle? Because there is an intense battle that is happening right before our eyes, and it's going to get worse. And my hope is that you're coming. And I mean, what I, what I give you in about 30 minutes is, is, I don't have many long fingernails, but it's th that much of what we need to know, right? My hope and prayer is that you take the notes home, that you study. I've used the term dig deeper, dig deeper, and really prepare yourself. And... and We've talked about predestination here. Again, I don't want a, an out loud answer, but are you prepared for that question? How would you have reacted if this person texted you? You probably would have been awake, but would you have been able to answer that question? And if not, let's all jointly roll up our sleeves and dig in to those topics, those things that we need to be prepared for. And let's teach our children and our youth those core things. And we have to be careful how we teach them. Pastor Brandon does a wonderful job. I don't, I don't know a lot of youth pastors that have spent the last several weeks going through the parables of Jesus to prepare our children, right? He's doing that where it's sticking with them. And they're talking about salvation. They're talking about things. We're, we're trying to do the best we can, but we, we need to get serious, really serious about arming ourselves to share the truth that's found in God's Word. I'm going to close there. Wayne, I absolutely love the way you pray. I'm going to ask you to pray tonight because you pray from your heart if you don't mind me putting you on the spot. Um, devotion yesterday was making me angry. Yes, sir. You were talking about the prescription is the gospel. Yes. And you said that is probably the most difficult thing for new Christians to understand is that we can't do anything right. to earn it. Right. But it's a free gift of God. That's... It's simple, yet we make it complex. Yeah. We think we have to, we, we got to do some kind of works. We got to try to earn it. Yeah. But it truly is the simplicity of the gospel.
the mic to me. Yes. Yes. We all know that God's word is the truth. And he speaks to each one of us and speaks to us a different way because it's all according to what he works on our heart and how we receive it. The question I got to ask you is, is this wrong with the different edition, the different versions of different Bibles? I know what the reason for that is happening because everybody's written, talking here, and everybody's written, I guess, gathering this information, the information that everybody bothers to get the Bible, you know, the meaning is still the same. But is, it, is there any Bible out there that's contradicting different things? Are you talking about people twisting whatever? Is this coming from a tradition of a Bible? Yes, there are Bibles that contradict, and they are made by certain faiths. Um, that they've created their own Bible to, and they say it's the Holy Bible, but it is absolutely not. And it, it, it supports their belief. And that's the whole reason it was written that way. Um, you would believe this is different. There's a, there's a, you know, it, 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 the, the thing, and I touched on this some in the sermon. Um, a lot of people like different Bibles for different reasons. Some, some are easier to read than others. Um, there are those, who I'm going to get in trouble with this statement for a second. There are some that would say King James is the absolute a accurate Bible. I disagree with that. Now, Brother Bill would probably hit me with his cane by me saying, <laughs> I got a cane and he will use it. I like, I like King James. I, like, I preach out of New King James. I use NIV. I use others that are out there. I use side by side because, you know, that's a whole different debate as well. That people are claiming that NIV is taking out words, but you have to understand how NIV was written, right? Because I touched on this Sunday. Certain, certain versions of the Bible are intended to be more word for word, taking this word, transporting it over this word transporting it over. Others, NIV is one of these, that takes a thought and translates to a thought so certain words may disappear. Now, again, Brother Bill's here, he's slapping with his cane for saying this. I like the NIV to capture the thought. I like the New King James to capture more word for word, but I also have a Bible at the house that most nobody has. It's called the literal Bible, and it's the most pure word for word translation of the Bible. The thing that I tell people, and I know Mark has done this, lays out multiple Bibles, right? And study it that way. That's the way you have to do it to really dig deep. And then, yes. No, it's, it's tough. Well, you have to look up the translation for that meaning, which there's multiple translations. You go, okay, which one? So, well, the best advice is take multiple Bibles and go side by side. That's yeah. Watch the, watch the movie or read it, either one. Yeah, yeah.
Yes, sir. Ah, oh, brother, you want to close this? <clears throat> thank you, Lord. And that's the first thing we need to say each and every day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for loving us and proclaim to us that you will never leave us. You will be with us each and every day for those who believe, Lord. Thank you for, for being here tonight as well this, with this opportunity. Uh, we know we've been mentioned here, well, what's our reasons and stuff, but truly from, from my standpoint, from where I've come from, Lord, it's because of my heart. That's why I'm here. Also, thank you, Lord, for the people who are mentioned today. We know we have so much sickness and illness, injuries. We have so many we got to lift up to you in their name that were mentioned here, Lord, as well. We got to lift them to you because you, uh, you understand better when we lift their names up to you. You receive it way much better. Also, as well, Lord, we, we come to you as, as well about what things are taking place. We know there's a lot, of, a lot of things that are taking place that so many of us don't understand. We never would believe that these things were taking place in this country, in this world today. But we still know that we still have people who still believe and believe in your son. And we know that he died for us, each and every one of us. And there's most important reason for that. Because then we know those who truly believe in Jesus, truly, Lord, that we know we'll be together, joined together that one glorious day. And I feel uh, prayers for the many people who have not received that word, also as well as those who have received it but don't believe it. They become uh, obstinate in the way the scripture tells us. So thank you, Lord, for this another time, and may we go about and be safe. We go back and to and from home. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Amen. What's <laughs> that?